Evangelist Deborah Gary here with the Ministry of Real Issues. You know what? I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get into prayer because I need to finish up this thing with a heart. It is called Help. I have a heart. We need to talk about why it matters. I have already done uh, three. I believe it was three. Yes, I've already done three shows already. I'm believing that this is going to be the last show of um, Help. I have a heart. Now, I'm not going to recap because I need my minutes, but if you go to YouTube, all you got to do is click in or type in Deborah Gary, okay, and you can catch up. You can see uh, one, two, and three on YouTube, and it's also on my timeline. Let me pray so I can go ahead and do my best to finish this up today. Father, I pray for the ministry of real issues. I pray for those that are listening in. Under, under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you touch every heart. God, I ask even now, even right now, that you would come through and touch every wounded heart, every heart that may be bruised, every heart that may be bitter, every heart that may be angry, every heart that may be depressed. Father, I ask even now that you would come in and do a divine intervention. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray that as the ministry go forth, that, that, that the hearts, that they will continue to be healed and be helped. In Jesus' name, I give you glory, honor, and praise. And Father God, you know me. I keep it real. I am first on that list. In Jesus' name, I want to ask how everybody's doing. I hope your day, your week, your month has been uh, wonderful. I'm trusting, I'm believing God. You made it. You came through. I thank God for you, you, and you. Now, let me get started. I'm not going to recap. I'm sorry. We were talking about help. I have a, help. I have a heart and why it matters. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try my best. We're going to get this concluded today. Seven ways to guard your heart. There are seven ways that you can guard your heart. Number one, you can protect everything that is coming into your heart. Be careful of what's entering into your heart. You know, you may hear somebody bickering over here. You may hear somebody arguing over here. You may have just engaged in an argument or a fight or something. Be careful of what you are allowing in your heart. Number two, persevere in the face of difficulties no matter what's coming your way no matter how hard it is you know what if it's if it's intentional for you to guard your heart you're going to have to persevere through that thing amen praise the lord you know what you and i we can't do it why because we can do all things through christ number three how to guard how to guard our hearts number three follow god's leading now let me be transparent I am very guilty of this because, you know, I want to do it. I've tried to do it Deborah's way. I want to do it because I feel Deborah knows what's, what's best for Deborah. You know, I'm not going to follow the leading of the Lord. I'm going to do it Deborah's way. Let me be transparent. Y'all may not have had that, but I have, okay? And let me tell you something. Ouch! It hurts. Amen. Praise the Lord. So to guard our hearts, we need to follow the leading of where God is taking us. That's why Proverbs 3, I believe it's uh, 5 and 6, it says, um, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. Why? Because it would help us to keep us from being in a place or position or predicament or somewhere that we got nobody, no place being. Amen. Number four talking about seven ways to guard our heart number four cultivate an atmosphere of community go out and socialize go out and do some things go bowling go to the movie um, um, um just do some things that are positive amen praise the lord number five talking about seven ways to guard our heart keep your priorities high and don't compromise in other words allow your pro allow your priorities to dictate your day but do not allow your day to dictate your priorities i have been guilty of this too when i know that i need to do this this and this amen as a priority but i have taken upon myself to do this this and this as if i knew best 
Amen. But you know what? In order to guard our hearts, though, we have got to let our priorities dictate the day. Do not allow your day to dictate your priorities because you know what? You may have got a distraction over here or you may have gotten another distraction over here. Therefore, you have just let the, the day dictate your priorities, but no longer because you know why, y'all? We are going to guard our hearts. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we are going to let our priorities dictate our day. Number six, we are talking about ways to guard your heart. Trust God with the rest and declare dependency on God. Trust God with the rest. Declare your dependency on the Father. There was a song out when I was growing up, and it was called, You Can Depend on God. I, I would love to hear that song again. It was, You Can Depend on God. And you know what? I believe with everything in me that the Lord made us. We were formed. We were fashioned. Our makeup is to be dependent. Oh, my God is to be dependent on God. He is our Father. He is our Heavenly Father. In other words, He's going to treat us better than our natural fathers can even think to treat us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So with that in mind, amen, we have another way of guarding our hearts because we are able to rest in Him. And then the last way is just preach to yourself. Preach, preach to yourself. You know what, girl? You can do this. You know what, girl? You don't need nobody backing you up. You've got before you. Who can be against you? You got this, girl. Go do your thing, girl. Go on your day. Preach to yourself if you have to. David, the Bible says that David encouraged himself. He wasn't looking to no praise. He wasn't looking to Solomon. David, he wasn't looking to Solomon. David encouraged himself. Self. And sometimes you all, we just got to do the same thing. Encourage yourself. That is another way that we are able to guard our hearts. Now, I'm going to move on. I'm going to speak just a little bit about the heart of a woman. I want to speak just a little bit about the heart of a woman. The heart of a, oops, take my glasses off. The heart of the woman is to be romance. Most women, they want flowers, they want to be kissed, they want to enjoy watching the sunset. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, when you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. This is talking about the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father wants us to seek Him with all of our hearts. He wants us to come after Him with all of our being, our soul, everything that we are. God wants us to chase Him this way. Amen. And that's how women is. You know, I know they say that men are hunters, but let me tell you, women, you know what? They enjoy, the, they want to be chased. They enjoy uh, 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 you chasing after them because there's something about a woman's heart that wants to be wanted. It's something about a woman's heart that needs to know that they are a priority in your life. Amen. Women long to be loved. Women long to be chosen. Amen. Women have someone, women long to have someone that is going to fight for her. This is the heart of a woman. Amen. And you know what? When you buy that woman a house, let me tell you something. She would end up making it a home. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? When you treat that woman like a queen, let me tell you something. She would never minister to the infidel. She would always bring out the king in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is just the fashion makeup of a woman. Now, let me put this stipulation in here, okay? This is not to say that this is the makeup of all women. No, 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 no. Okay? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that the heart of a woman is that she does like to be chased. She does want to be a priority. She does want to feel like she's chosen. She does want to feel like she's she's your one and only. Okay? Not saying that that's something that we have to have. Okay? Let me go on. The heart of a woman unveils her beauty. Women have this thing that they want to be noticed. Even, even when we were little girls, you know, we, we would play with our uh, Barbie dolls. 
You know what I'm saying? We would go get our tiaras, put our little tiaras, you know, on our head. You know, women just got this thing to be noticed. You know, they need to feel beautiful. They are. They already are. Every woman that I know is a beautiful person. God has, let me tell you something. God has shaped them. God has molded them to be a beautiful being. Do you understand what I'm saying? Women are beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is their heart. They want to feel beautiful. They need to know that they are that, oh, flower in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. They don't want to be treated like a thorn. Like, ouch, what just happened here? Oh, I tried to pick you up. Oh, I tried to do this for you, but I got cut or, 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 or I got stuck. I got pricked. No, 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 no. They want to be that flower. They want to feel like, like they are that most precious, beautiful thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let me go on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For the ladies, I want to talk just a little bit. For the ladies. I want to go here just a little bit. I want to talk about how to know that he is really into you. How to know that he is really into you. And if you're a teenager, let me say it this way. How to know that he's feeling you. I think that's the way y'all said, right? Is he, are you feeling me? Amen. Praise the Lord. First thing you got to do, y'all, notice the way that he looks at you. How is he looking at you? Is he, is he looking at you with a quick glance? You know, like he would his sister-in-law, you know, or is he looking at you like, hmm, something special. Yeah, I see some interest there. Let me see if I can find out what they all about. Secondly, he will also want to give to you. Let me tell you something. When a man is really feeling you or when he is into you, he is going to try to give something. He is going to do something in a way that's going to let you know that he is giving something to you, whether it's his time, whether it's his position, whether it's his it's, it's conversation, whatever. He is going to do something to let you know that he is giving to you. Then he is going to treat you like a, pre, like a priority. He's not going to keep you last or make you last or fit you in. Amen. But when he's into you, he is going to treat you like you are a priority. Amen. Let me go on. He's got to really see you. When a man is into you, you all, he is going to see you. You know what I'm saying? He is going to recognize that you have a mole on the right side of your cheek, of your chin. He is going to recognize that you have the most brightest smile that lights up any candle. I mean, he's going to notice something different about you that others may not have noticed. He may even notice that you got on a different a different uh, suit today or you're wearing a different dress or you just bought a new pair of shoes. He is going to be looking at you. <coughs> and then another way to know that he's into you, your happiness is going to be as important to him as his own. He is going to see to it that you are just as happy as he is. And then another way you're going to find out if he's into you, he's going to start missing you just as much as, as you are missing him. He's going to start missing you. And you're going to, you'll feel it. You will know that he is really starting to miss you. He may even start to call. He may even start to come around more because he's missing you. Amen. And then he's going to try to keep you in the loop. We talked about how to know when a man is really into you. He is going to try to keep you in the loop. He's going to let you know, well, baby, you know, uh, Friday night, I'm not going to be available because I've got such and such and this and this to do. So, you know, but I will be available come after seven o'clock that evening. You know, he's going to keep you in the loop. He's going to let you know what's really going on. He's going to want to immerse himself into your life. I got to keep it moving because see my time running up again. He's got to be there for you even when it's an inconvenient time. For example, you're, he's at work. The secretary walks in. He's instructing his secretary. He does not want to be disturbed. The secretary walks in, knock, 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 opens the door, and, and he says, listen, he said, I thought I told you I did not want to be disturbed. And the secretary says, yes, but uh, Lula May is on the phone. Well, you know, he may find a time. He's like, listen, y'all. 
Let's take a five minute intermission. I will be right back. And he's got to go. He's got to get that phone call. Now, let me tell you something. That may be just a little over the top, okay? But you get what I'm saying, though. He's going to see to it that no matter what, some kind of way, even if it's immediately, he is going to find that time to be with you or to get back with you. He's not going to give up. Men got this thing that they don't, it's just in them. They just don't give up. This is how to know when they are into you. They're just going to know. You're just going to know. You're going to have this feeling. You know, you're not going to feel like, oh, something ain't right. This just don't feel right. I'm not, I'm not into this. I can't get with this. You know, you get all that. He, you're probably feeling that he's just not into you, okay? But you got to feel it. You got to know. It's going to be right. The atmosphere is going to be, it's going to be right. It's going to seem right. It's going to be like, you know what? I got to get closer. I got, I got to know more about this person. I got to be around this person a little. I enjoy being with this person. Amen. Let me go on. He, uh, there should be a time that you are going to have peace, you are going to have calm, and you are going to have a knowing. We just discussed that. Now, let me share something with you that I did not know. This is just a side note since uh, we are talking about the women, how to know that the man is into her. We talked about the women's heart. But you know, I just found out something a little fascinating that I didn't know. Do you know that women... That when they are pregnant, when they are carrying a female womb, when they are carrying a female fetus in their womb, do you know that they are actually carrying their grandchildren too? Because, I didn't know this, I didn't know this, excuse me, because when you are carrying a female in the womb, do you know that even then, that the females in the womb are starting to produce their womb. They are producing their eggs. And so because of that, you are actually carrying your grandchildren, your potential grandchildren. I thought that was fascinating. I just read that somewhere. I just thought that was just fascinating. I just wanted to share that with you. Now, let me go here. Let me go here. And then I'm going to come back to this. We just talked about how to know if he's into you. So I figured in correlation with that, I need to speak just a little bit about what captivates a man's heart. What can captivate the man's heart? Amen. Praise the Lord. Number one, honesty. Honesty. Don't play with a man's heart. Let me tell you something. Men hurt. They can hurt just like that of a woman. They just been taught to man up, you know, but they can hurt just like a woman. So do not play with a man's heart. Number two, physical beauty. Men tend to feel with their eyes. You know, they're going to notice something about you first, that physical attraction, that physical beauty about you. And a lot of times, you know, it could be your personality. It could just be the way you're doing something, the way that they see you're modeling yourself. You know what I'm saying? Let me go on. Your own self-esteem. A lot of y'all, you know what? Let me tell you something. Men love a woman, a woman with self-esteem. They love a woman that is confident in herself. Amen. Because when you're confident in yourself, you are definitely going to be strong and confident and be there for him. Amen. But they love, it's just something about a man's nature that they love a, a confident woman, a woman with self-esteem. Uh, number four, there's going to be language in your eyes, you know, ways to captivate a man, let him know you're interested. Find find a way. Now, I'm not talking about lustful or anything like that, y'all, okay? No, that's not my spirit. I'm talking about how to captivate a man's attention, you know, and just let him know you're interested. You know, a lot of times, if you just give that look longer than three seconds, you know, a lot of times when you're not interested in nobody, you're not going to have a look longer than three seconds. You're going to do this and just, you know, do all this. But when you give that look and you're doing this, you're like, you know, just something to let them know that, you know, yes, there's a desire. There's an interest. You can't speak. You can't say hello to me. Let me go on. Captivate his stomach. It was told many times over. They say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Cook, cook dinner. No, I'm not talking about go getting something from Ponderosa or go getting something from Golden Corral. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about cook a homemade 
meal, put love, put effort in it. They believe it or not, they will notice that. They will notice it. Then don't nag and don't mother him. Women just don't like to be. When, I mean, I'm sorry. Men just don't like for women to nag them. You know what I'm saying? They're watching television. They got a good game on. They they with their friends or whatever, you know. And here you come. Didn't I tell you to take out the garbage? And how come you ain't do this yet? No, 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 no. They not into that. They not feeling it. That's not going to be very captivating. I'm just keeping it real with you. So try not to nag. I think, is it in Psalms or Proverbs about a nagging woman? The Bible says that it's better for a man to be up on the housetop. Amen. Let me go on. Men want to win. Men want to win. They may get into a mode for goals, and therefore they may not text you back right away. Let me tell you something. If if a man is into doing something already, okay, let's say they want to get that business venture, and they're trying to get this business venture done, you know, and then here you are texting, and you're texting, and you're texting, and you're texting, and his mind right now, and his goal, and the only thing that is on his mind at this point is getting this done. He's got the witness. He's on a time limit. He's on a time frame. You know, so-and-so is going to be leaving the state by 5 o'clock. He's got to get this done, and you text and text and nag and nag. No, no, no. Men want to win, so please honor and respect that. Then we need to know that you're going to make him feel better, that you are in his corner. I just spoke about that earlier. Men need to know that you are going to be in his corner. They need to know that through, oh, my God, I'm feeling this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. They need to know that through thick or thin, that you are going to be in their corner, that you are going to stick with them, that you are going to defend them, that you are going to continue to honor them, that you are going to continue to be with them, that you are going to continue to stand by them, that you are still going to continue to reverence them as the king in your life, as they will be reverencing you as the queen in his life. Amen. Let me go on. So just stand by your man. Somebody put that song out. It's a country western, I think. But it's true. Stand by your man. He needs to know that you're going to be there. He comes in. He says, baby, you know I lost my job today. You know, this ain't the time to pack your bags and go. No, you need to let him know. Baby, look, I got all the confidence in the world. You know what? You have brought this family through so much. And I got faith in you, baby. And if it don't happen tomorrow, if it don't happen next week, baby, I know it's going to happen. I believe you. That's what they need to know. They need to know that you are going to, oh, my God, I'm feeling that. Oh, Jesus, they need to know that you are definitely going to stand by them. Let me go on. Men want a relationship that's going to make them feel good. Listen, I just talked about this earlier too. You need to bring out the king in him and not the inf infidel. Men, men, they need to know that you see them as a superiority, that you see them as somebody, that you are acknowledging them, that they just not taking up space. You feel me? They're, you, they're not just there taking up space, but that they are a major part in your life. You know, we're talking about how to captivate a man's heart and not just captivate, but y'all look, we need to be able to keep it. Let me go on. They need to feel love from you. You know what? They need to know that they really are loved. Not just saying it. You know, it's good to just say, you know, baby, I love you. You know, but sometimes it can be a norm. You know, you're going to bed at night. You know, you're pulling the covers up. You just, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. And you go in bed. No, no. But they need to feel that love. They need to know that you have put forth effort. You know, put, go to the driving wheel, the steering wheel. Say, baby, I love you. And put a rose uh, 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 attached to the steering wheel or something like that. But let him know that he is a priority. You know what I'm saying? Go out your way to fix his favorite dishes. And it don't even have to be a Sunday. But you know what? Do it on a Tuesday night. You know, bring out them, 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 that, them, uh, I don't know what men like, ribs or something like that. You know, fix that favorite plate. Get that blueberry muffin on his plate. You know, butter that muffin for him. You know, put that bite in his his mouth. You see what I'm saying? Let the man know that you will always and that you do love him, that you will be there for him. Let me go on. Be a woman that can help him build and not tear down. Let me repeat that. Be a woman that can help him build and not tear down. Look, men put forth too much. They give too much emphasis. They build their builders. They're, they're builders with their hands, with their minds. They don't need 
a woman that's bored, ain't got nothing to do, you know, coming in, tearing down their hard work. They need you to help them build. We are talking about how to captivate the heart of a man and how, and not just that, but I'm adding the stipulation and how to keep it. So help your man build instead of tearing down. Amen. Baby, can I make any phone calls for you today? You know, baby, you need me to stop by the office and do this for you and bring you this memo, whatever, but help them to build. Then some really, some men, they really like it when you tell them what you really think and your interest in him. Now, I got to admit, and I've, I've got five minutes, Lord Jesus, I got to get this stuff. I must admit to you, though, let me say this. I'm very old school. I am old school, okay? I got a problem with telling a man how I feel. So if I'm doing that, you best believe that I feel like I am hearing from God. I got to break the straw or something because I'm all the way old school. I've always felt like the man should do this and the man should do this. Uh, the man should do that. But you know what? It, the way things are going now, it is okay for the women to let them know that they do have an interest in, in the particular guy. And I think that men are looking for that now anyway. Amen. Always listen to them. You know what? You, they need a listening ear. Not just hear them, but listen and then repeat back what they said so that they will know that you are listening. Have a sense of confidence in yourself. We've already addressed that. Try to smile. Try to laugh through it all, even through the difficult times. Try to smile and try to laugh through it. Amen. And you all know what? Even through all of this, do you know that you are still guarding your heart's now, they've got a saying, I'm moving fast because I just got a few minutes. They've got a saying, and it says, um, girl, just follow your heart. How many have heard that? Girl, just follow your heart. What is your heart saying? But let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. We better be very careful when we follow our hearts, okay? We are talking about help. I have a heart. Guard your hearts. We better be very careful when we are following our heart because the people really know what they are really saying when they say, follow your heart. Let, go with me, if you will. I don't have time to turn there. But go with me to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who could know it? The Bible says that the heart is deceitful and wicked. Why would you want to follow that? Go with me on down to Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication thoughts, false witnesses, blasphemies. All these things here can defile a man. So if this is the case, why would you want to follow that? Why would you want to follow your heart when these things can be in your heart? Why would you want to follow that? And then go with me down to Psalms chapter 19, 119, verse 70. The Bible says that their heart, that it is as fat as grease, meaning, meaning that the heart can be very insensitive. It can be very insensitive. So we have got to be careful when we are telling people, look, it's okay. Just go ahead and just follow your heart. But I got two minutes. Let me go through quickly on how to remedy this. We're going to talk about how you can remedy this follow your heart thing when the heart is already deceptive. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust God with your heart. Now, I got a question to ask you. Do you really think you're going to go wrong if you trust God with your heart? Really? Amen. We're talking about remedies here. The second one, Psalms 28, verse 7. The Bible says that my heart trusted in him and I am helped. I am helped. Why? Because you trusted the Lord. You didn't follow your heart, which can have deceitful ways. But you followed that, the ways of the Lord. Amen. I want to ask a few questions. How much time have I got? One minute. So I'm not going to be able to, you know what? I'm going to try to get this done. I'm just going to ask a few. I'm not going to go through it all. But I just want us to do a spiritual heart check. I just want to just say a few things that we can do a check with our hearts. Number one, do I rely on Jesus alone or do I go to other people and hear what they have to say? Number two, 
Do I tell other people about Jesus? Number three. Do I gossip? Number four. Do I have a critical judgment spirit? Number five. Do I care about what others have to think of me? Number six. Am I kind toward other people? Number seven. Am I generous with my finances? Number eight. Do I make time to pray? Number nine. Do I make crude, devilish remarks? Number 10. Am I worldly or, 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 or Christ-minded? Number 11. Do I watch a lot of vulgar television shows that's not pleasing to God? Number 12. Do I tithe? Number 13. Do I keep in mind the wrongs that other people have done to me? Am I pondering that over and over? I'm just going to read two more and I'm just going to have to stop. Number um, 14, have I forgiven those that have wronged me? And then I'm just going to have to stop here. Number 15, is there anyone, is there anyone whose forgiveness that I need to seek? Amen. Y'all, this is just a few things. I have to stop. I'm out of time as to how to do a spiritual heart checkup. Listen, I pray God bless you, be with you, heal you, help you in the name of Jesus. I am Evangelist Deborah Gary. My website is www.realissuesinlife.com. My voicemail is 682-313-0539. I'd love to hear from you. I love you. God bless you. Bye now. Bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.